to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. Before we dive into this powerful episode, please remember to subscribe to our channels and give us a five-star rating on iTunes to continue hustling. This episode is brought to you by Cairo HD, Evo Creative Media, 100% Chiropractic, Cairo Health USA, Imaging Services, Cairo Moguls, New Patients in a Box, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Sherman College of Chiropractic, Life Chiropractic College West, Pro Hockey Cairos, Pro Baseball Cairos, and the IFCO. You can benefit from our full list of sponsors by visiting our sponsor page at chirohustle.com forward slash sponsors. Links in the description. Now let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 578 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. I'm your producer, Luke Millett, and here's your host, James Chester. So today we have the opportunity of interviewing Dr. Kenji Ehrlich. And if you want to hear how to create the American dream with chiropractic and America, stay tuned. Welcome back. We are on another episode of the Cairo Hustle podcast. It's 578 today. Uh, Dr. Kenji Ehrlich is on with me today, the Texas painkiller, um, just transitioned from uh, California to Texas over the past couple of years. Um, there's going to be a lot of deep dives that we're going to take today about freedom, medical freedom, family health freedom, and those are really big topics of our big why. Why do we do what we do? Well, freedom of speech is number one. Chiropractic truth is woven into that medical freedom and family health freedom. I think we're gonna go deep dives on both those today as the big why, why Dr. Kenji um, uprooted his family, left everything behind, friends and family and things, and uh, put a pod together and uh, transition to Austin, Texas. Um, yeah. But during this journey of the intro that we do, we do stay very uh, philosophical. I believe it's important to understand chiropractic philosophy, even if you only hear it for a minute through my voice. Um, BJ Palmer Sacred Trust is something that we protect with our show by um, producing real chiropractic conversations and real truth of chiropractic. So um, if you guys don't know what BJ Palmer Sacred Trust is, go and search for it right now. You're going to learn more about chiropractic than you did previously. Stop the interview. Just go check it out. Come back to us. Um, then we do uh, support subluxation based chiropractic. I know it's kind of crazy. I have to say that, but they're removing the stuff from our colleges. They're changing the way that students are finishing up education. And they're saying that some of these terminologies are antiquated, which they never will be because they're old. It's all old. It's philosophy. It's what chiropractic was founded upon. Um, <laughs> you can't remove it. Sorry. And then uh, we believe in innate intelligence and universal intelligence that when you adjust man or woman, the physical it connects them to man or woman, the spiritual. And uh, 476 episodes later, Dr. Kenji, welcome back. Hey. Thanks for having me, my brother. <laughs> it's wild, dude. I feel like it was just yesterday. It, yeah, it did seem like yesterday. I was in my car <laughs> trying to do the interview, and you're like, that's not working. Get to your office. <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was, lots happened since then. Yeah, so 2019 all the way to 2023 now, we're about to step into this uh, new year of 2024. Um, Tell us about the journey, man. What's happened? Well, since I talked to you last in January, that year, I thought I would prove that chiropractic was the number one modality in back pain. So I decided to break the world record in most weight deadlifted in 24 hours, 1.1 million pounds, as you can see in that uh, little thing right there. There's my world record. <laughs> I figured a chiropractor should own that title. <laughs> Someone's beat me since then, but uh, did that, ran a marathon in barefoot shoes, and then uh, the whole COVID thing broke out right after that. And that's kind of what what sparked uh, my, my awakening and my family's awakening. You know? Yeah, you know, as we were reminiscing over the, the intro 20 minutes or so, I was like listening to like a lot of what you're saying and uh you know we were all amped up for 2020 man we were all like we're gonna come into the year of perfect vision we're gonna come into like this new <laughs> era of like opportunity yeah and, and people's businesses were doing really really well yeah 
It, it was it was really good, and it, it ended up being really good for me. Anyways, that year I saw more new patients than I did ever. I saw eight hundred over eight hundred new patients, and it was just all from social media. It helped me pivot to a complete different modality of advertising, and uh, and I'm thankful for it. And it it woke me up to it, but it it was crazy how it all just came about. Like, you know, I sniffed it out from the beginning. I was like, this is just a bunch of bullshit. And I did this video post where I'm wearing this mask and I found all these patent numbers for the coronavirus vaccine. And I'm just reading them out. I'm like, and then let me guess, they're gonna close down the schools and then they're gonna save us with this. The second I posted that, it got millions of views and I started getting all kinds of phone calls, death threats, they're leaving messages, people on Facebook saying they're coming to get me. This and I'm like, why? Because I just fucking said some shit. And uh, and I, I had to start carrying my gun to the office. Like, And in California, you can't carry, carry a gun unless you have a permit and so but i i had it right next to me in my seat i had i had it by the front desk so my staff could blast anybody weird that comes through you know it was like legit death threats and i was like man i must have i must have hit a nerve and uh and then the whole everything happened and and uh we all know how that went and i just i refused to submit to it and you know, I kept open the whole time, lost some patients, unfortunately, they're pissed. And uh, and I just stayed open. And even my, we got written up by the, the health department several times, thousands of dollars of fees. And and I, I told my staff, I'm like, listen, this, these are our views. You know, uh, we obviously don't wear masks. Um, it, you have the choice to wear them or not. And uh, if you don't want to, that's fine. I it just got to let you know, we get, you know, we could get closed down and, it, and it's your livelihood, you know? They're like, we're all in, let's go. So we put up a big sign on our front door, you're entering a peaceful protest <laughs> and come on in. And we're protesting the masks and it was just a big bullshit ride, but uh, I figured out how to, maximize Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I had some time on my hands and <laughs> mastered that. And we, we saw so many new patients from that. And I just attracted the, the best optimal patients, like my kind of people, they were just pouring in. And it was like, there we're getting so many people, I had to start charging people. Uh, I started charging them at first, I was like, first visits free just come in like i'll do i'll do anything to get you in here and then we bumped it up to 100 and then we went up to uh 150 then 200 i'm like i i can't see 30 new patients a week get, get, bump it up more we bumped it up to two 297 and that was our sweet spot to where we would get just a steady 15 new patients a week and they all prepaid before they even got their got their appointments and it was it just worked out amazing ever since then i developed a program <laughs> on how to maximize your instagram page but uh i'll, I'll send the link for that <laughs> yeah that's that's really like impressive and then you start documenting the whole journey um yeah what we, you, call, uh, you call it 550 to 5000 yeah five five thousand to 500 because okay. we lived in a <laughs> giant five thousand square foot house on top of a mountain two teslas and and we just got rid of it all gave all our crap away sold the cars bought an rv and just left and we were like we don't know where we're going we just ain't staying here like our, we were homeschooling our girls. The final thing was like my wife was doing all the homeschooling and she's like, and it was a nightmare. And then at the end, they're like, if you want your kids homeschooling to count, they're going to have to get the COVID shot. And then we're like, no, it makes no sense at all. <laughs> we got to get out of here right this second. Sold the house, bought an RV and just drove away. And I, I had no idea what I was going to do with the office. And we just ended up 
<laughs> we just drove to, we were like, let's tour California, whatever you want to see in California, let's get it over with. Cause we ain't coming back here ever again. <laughs> so we went to Yosemite and, and went up the coast and then, uh, drove over to, uh, Arizona as we're just looking for places to live. Arizona too hot, uh, Vegas too hot and dry, uh, went up to Utah and we're like, this is nice. Yeah. North of Salt Lake. I'm like, ah, oh, these are our people. And, but Salt Lake city was just kind of junky, you know, it wasn't anything. And, uh, so we went over to Colorado and, uh, my wife ended up having a panic attack there that put her down in the hospital and, uh, with three girls while I'm in California. And so she has her whole anxiety journey tanked her hormones, like didn't even know what was happening. So she had panic attacks for, I think, every day for six months after that. And just trying to balance her hormones. We're on the road. We have no place to live. And uh, we went to Albuquerque, kept driving. And then we landed in Austin. We're like, stayed on the lake here. And I was like, yeah, we could we could definitely grow our, let our kids grow up on a, this lake life, you know, flew to Florida just to check it out, drove from the keys all the way up the coast, up to Orlando, checking out neighborhoods, just, to, you know, we're in the keys. We're like, Oh, this is beautiful and it's affordable. And then like the wind started and then a hurricane started coming in. We're like, we're out of here. We ain't trading fires and earthquakes for hurricanes and went back up. And then we just, ended up i i found uh first my wife wrestled with uh she was a pro wrestler with the wwe and she wrestled with uh she has a friend that lived here that's a wrestler and they they told us about this area and we came and visited and then um i used to adjust del big tree and his whole staff in california and i called him one day i'm like hey where did you guys move to in texas they're all spice wood i'm like that's where we're moving then. And so we ended up actually buying a house in Spicewood and, uh, and it's, and I had to fly back and forth from every city we went to, I'd fly back so I can adjust Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then I fly, I'd leave my family in an RV park, fly back, adjust, fly back to that little podunk town, wherever I was, keep driving and did that for, three or four months and then finally ended up in Texas. And it's like found the best school district, parked our RV in a RV park in the good school district <laughs> <laughs> just so our kids could go to the schools there. And then, uh, and then about six or eight weeks later, we found a badass house uh, on, on the water and just lake access. So it's, it's like a little slice of heaven, you know? So. And, and I think we were talking about this before the whole interview started and you're just following your moral compass. Oh, hundred percent. Like we, like, first of all, I know what was like, as you know, from that last thing, like I used to party a lot in LA and I got into a lot of trouble. I did every drug there is, and I know how accessible it is and I'm sure it is everywhere, but the, likelihood of it happening here is less the likelihood of my daughters meeting a real cowboy here is very high <laughs> like i was just coming out of i had them all in gymnastics and this little three-year-old boy yanks the door open and holds it for all of us i'm like wow like you ain't gonna see that anywhere else you ain't seeing that in california that's for sure and just the 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 it's it's hard to say like just how different people are here it's they're so polite i was i was an asshole too when i came here and they're not happy to see us come but um as long as you, you don't california they're texas they say <laughs> <laughs> you know but it's it's amazing here the schools are amazing every person i meet is polite and and it's yeah, we're just like, as chiropractors, we've been always fighting the, the establishment. Like our kids in elementary school, they were the only kids in the whole school that weren't vaccinated. And 
when we moved into Calabasas, which is a nicer, nicer neighborhood, there were still only about a 10 percent of the kids that weren't vaccinated. So we've been fighting this whole vaccine thing for years. We had full medical exemption for all three of them. And so we're, we're no strangers to these. So one of the good things that COVID did, it just kind of opened a lot more people up to the harmful effects of vaccines and, you know, helps get them on our lifestyle plan a little bit. And so we just, you know, with them trying to mandate everything, I'm like, this ain't going away. You know, we're, this place is a lost cause. We're out of here. And Texas, it, it you ain't never losing your freedoms here, ever. You know, you can, we just do a, uh, all we have to do is a little belief form. We don't believe in doing it. Hand it into the nurse. Okay, done. Okay, thank you. You know, conversation's over. And they don't judge you. They, you know, everybody has their own beliefs and you're welcome to have your own beliefs here. There's so much polarity when it comes to like family. I like the opener. We both we, we support medical freedom, and family health freedom. Yes. And and I think that it really kicked into me having to add that into our intro. But yeah. I, got, I got tired of the polarity of people yeah. wanting to tell other people how to take care of their bodies. Right. And what the government was telling somebody that was like okay for them if they wanted to participate in society. Like right. No one's yeah. ever done that. Like it's, homeless, it's ridiculous. Go, go tell some homeless people that they have to go and, and follow these rules. That's why right. they're homeless. <laughs> yeah, they got tired of the rules. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, and my kids, like I, I'll put my kids' health up against any vaccinated kid. <laughs> you know, and mine are healthier, guaranteed. You know, all day long. You know, not mm. and you know, I'm not like bashing the kids that but, are vaccinated. They they just don't. The, the majority of them just don't know anything, you know? People think that they're doing the right thing when they're yeah. just not. They're just not. Yeah, they don't they're know. Just not. So, um, yeah. So you went full Joe Rogan on it. You're like, yep. I just got to get out. Yep, we're out. <laughs> but I, I think I think a lot of what he did it for, too, was for his family. Oh, really? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. He, he wanted to have his kids not be raised in that environment. He yeah. had to have them be raised in, like, a... Uh, a place where people behave like Americans. Yeah, and it's like your kids go to public school here because the public schools are awesome. They're just like, there's, there aren't even really private schools around. Like the public schools are just like this Lake Travis High School that I'm next to. They pump out NFL quarterbacks <laughs> left and right. And there's like almost 4,000 kids that go there. It's like a collegiate... <laughs> sports program that they have it's it's craziness there and uh, i've never seen anything like it and people are into sports here it's like ridiculous so yeah it, it's amazing talk talk about the patriotism that you've seen within the schools too because i think that that's oh. a really important thing for people to hear well like when when we like first our kids in they went to, they were in Calabasas. They didn't have to say the Pledge of Allegiance or anything. And when they come here now, the kids have to say the Pledge of Allegiance first. And then they say, they do the Texas Pledge <laughs> to the Texas flag. And then they have a moment of silence for any fallen soldiers. Like, that's amazing and no one says nothing about it like they all just do it because it's respectful you know and and they respect texas and america and the texas flag you know and there's texas flags everywhere here like i couldn't even like i've never seen a california flag flying <laughs> somewhere <laughs> yeah and and i think that it teaches people that anything's possible still and there still is the opportunity for the american dream and i know that oh, yeah. you're, you're going back to that like you said as a practitioner 25 years i created a massive clinic that was seeing x amount of people throughout yeah. the week and i could do it on autopilot and now yeah. and now you're going back you're relicensing in texas yep tell, tell yep. me about that man well yeah, you're right. I was I was comfortable in my office. We we averaged like probably for the past I mean, we were seeing up upwards of 600 a week and I was just by myself doing all the adjustments. And 
and uh, you know we we've averaged double digit new patients for 15 <laughs> years a week you know and we saw a lot of people and yeah I just did not all I did was I walk in hey who are you I look down and they're laying down on my my protocol was I meet them once they've done the x-rays done the report of findings got them on a schedule they're laying down on the table and then I walk in hey how you doing I'm Dr. Kenji you ready to get this going boom and I just adjust all I did was adjust for two two hours straight you know see a hundred a shift just knock things out and uh and I was on cruise control. I wrote down a list of everything I never wanted to do again years ago. And it was, I don't want to write PI reports. I don't want to in bill insurance. I don't want to do an exam. I don't want to do a report. I don't want to do a report of findings. I don't want to do ex like all that crap. I don't want to do finances. It's like, and I, I made that happen in that office to where I delegated that to everybody else. So all I did was I went in and I did what I love so I can adjust and I love promoting. I adjust and promote. That, that's like my thing. I'm the creative mind. You made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is brought to you by Cairo HD, Evo Creative Media, 100% chiropractic, Cairo Health USA, Imaging Services, Cairo Moguls, New Patients in a Box, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Sherman College of Chiropractic, Life Chiropractic College West, Pro Hockey Cairos, Pro Baseball Cairos, and the IFCO. You can benefit from our full list of sponsors by visiting our sponsor page at chirohustle.com forward slash sponsors. Links in the description. Now let's hustle. EJ Palmer style. Yeah, that, well, it's the inspired, you know, beard, so. <laughs> the, the, the Texas painkiller style. That's right. <laughs> well, it, it's 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 really, honestly, I've done 1,200 interviews in the past six years, dude. Like, like when you see patients, I do interviews. Yes. And, and high volume, like, yeah. like five interviews every week. That's my yeah. jam. That's my jam. Yeah. And, and when you so, find out what you like, you insulate yourself with the team. Yeah. Like I don't I don't I don't update uh artwork. I don't post right. to YouTube. I don't I've never edited a podcast, just to be honest. Right. Like Good. I came I came into podcasting the same way that you assembled your team around you to be a chiropractor. Right. Except for yeah. I did it from day one. I was like, yeah. I'm not gonna edit a podcast. <laughs> right. I'm not gonna post it. I'm gonna promote. And yes. I'll be the guy that has the chiropractic conversations because no one else can hold that down. Right. Yeah. So I'm totally. going to go to my zone and, yep. and here we are yep. 1200 interviews later, but I'm back to you. Yeah. You have such a like powerful message, a powerful story that anybody can still have the American dream. Totally. And I'm starting like, I'm starting in a city where I have no friends. You're a Californian in Texas too. Let's yeah, not forget yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm trying, people, yeah. People aren't like, hey, bro, you're from California. Thanks for coming to town. Yeah, no, no. They're like, <laughs> don't California or Texas. They're like, <laughs> watch this yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, and they're not too fond of a lot of us. But, you know, I, and I'm just starting this office from scratch. But I'm doing it the way I ain't doing this again. This is it. This is my last <laughs> office and I ain't going to build another one like this. So I went all in on this thing and I, I, I built it exactly how I wanted. I got the badass tables all custom powder coated to my greens, decompression tables, brand new x-ray. Half of it is, is physical healing, which is my, my aspect. The other half is energetic healing, which is on my wife's side. So she does uh, emotional alignment, clearing out past traumas. We have a biocharger and chi machines and PMFs, sound bowls and all kinds of crap on that side. And then my <laughs> side's over here with the projector, with the DJ playing and and, and uh, just rocking out adjustments. It's, you know, that's the plan in my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so you took your your style of what you want 
now you're creating it. Um, yes. wh when do you see yourself open for business? Um, I'm hopefully this week I'll get the green light to open and I've already been seeing a few patients here and there that just people are referring, but we're, we're trying to do the grand opening, like the day after Thanksgiving with just a lot of people that we've met here and, uh, and we'll just see how it goes from there. So I'm hoping within two weeks we'll be up and running and pumping it out, you know? So, so timing between episode 102, when we first had you on Cairo hustle to 476, a lot's happened. A lot. <laughs> a lot's happened, man. And, totally. and, 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 and I, I've seen, a, I mean, I remember your Instagram journey. Yeah. I, remember, I remember your, your road trip across the United States as to where Kenji's going to land. Yeah. <laughs> it was almost like, where's Waldo? Right. But it was like in real life, like, where yeah. are you going to go? And totally. I, I, I do, I, I love this episode because 25 years later, people can still find that they can create the American dream in America. Yeah. And you're not stuck. Like so many people, when I did that trip, they're like, oh, I wish I could do that. I'm like, you could be dead in a month. You better do it now. Like, like so many, like when we're at the RV parks, like I couldn't tell you how many old ass people were there that could barely fucking move. And they probably just retired. And, and like they waited 40 years to be able to sit in this RV park and their body doesn't even work. You know, I'm like, just fucking do it now. You know, yeah. I did so much in the last few years. It's like now I feel like I have to do big stuff all so, the time or well, I'm not producing. Let's let's go back to the basics. Let's inspire some docs that might not be crushing it that might be struggling to get to 100, that might be struggling to get to 150. Right. What, what's different about your mindset that allows that to just not even be a part of the conversation? Oh, man. Like. <laughs> because it sounds so easy. It does. Like, I, I just think, well, number one, I think you got to be true to your you got to sell what you really believe works like like how, how, did, how did you get that though how did you get to that point you know because like i i just was it mentorship through, was it like watching other people's practice styles yeah no like it's just the more people you adjust the more you really see like i i just really knew the adjustment just fucking heals people and everything else i do is to help them hold on to what I do. Like nothing else heals. Like, like you can do fucking lasers and all that shit. And yeah, it may help, but like, you, you can't undo me looking at the phone like this for four hours, you know? So you just change their habits, adjust them, and then you just see their fucking life's change in or front of your eyes, you know? I, and, I, I think we want to take them back old school. It's like Clarence Gonstead. Find it, fix it, leave it alone. Yeah. I mean, and, and that probably worked great back then, but they didn't have cell phones, <laughs> you and, know, and, and, and GMO foods and chemicals. <sighs> and everything was organic and they walked. They didn't fucking sit in front of a TV 10 hours a day or a video game, you know, they used their bodies. So just adjusting it and leaving it back then worked great. Now you got to teach people that you can't. Well, I basically only tell patients to do what I do. If I don't do it, I ain't going to tell them patients what to do. I ain't going to tell them to stop drinking because I like to drink tequila. But I do say, hey, if you're in pain, if you drink alcohol, it's going to fuck you up a little bit more, you know, so mm -hmm. maybe cut back until you're feeling better and, you know, or stop eating the sugar when you're inflamed because it's going to hurt. You're not going to quit sugar and I eat it here and there. But, you know, you just got to be true to you can't be the hypocrite doctor who thinks they're perfect and saying, oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. You got to be yourself. You got to be the expert at what you do. You got to like if you're telling someone to get a cervical curve and that's that's the whole their whole problem, you better put your x-ray up there and show them your curve. 
and you better know know how to do it yourself, you know? So I don't, and I just took my x-ray and it's fucked up now. I lost, I used to have a beautiful 40 degree curve for probably 15, 20 years. And I just took it now. I haven't x-rayed it in a couple years. It's at like 20 and I see like a bone spur growing. I'm like, oh, I haven't been on my program. I got to get back on my curve corrector. I got to start, you know, really getting serious about it again. And and if you're not doing that stuff, you can't give a program to a person that wants to heal and you can't tell them to do stretches you don't do. Can't tell them to do exercises you don't do. Just tell them to do what you do and be real about it. And it's so much easier than faking it. So what's next for you, man? I know, I know that you- have you practiced before with your wife in the same building? One day. One day. Yeah. She was so, gonna do front so, office. So we got a new chapter. You guys are yeah. still in the same building. Yeah, she did one one day and and I like like I like stuff neat. And when I came to the front desk, there was like pens like all over. I'm like, everything has a home. And I start putting the pens back. She's all, don't tell me what to do in front of the patient. <laughs> I'm like, this is not going to work out. You're fired. <laughs> so it's going to be an interesting dynamic, <laughs> you know, but I, I think we can make it work. We're we're going to work. We're working on uh, getting a podcast, The Good Life. Yeah, I love know? it. And I love it's just going to combine, uh, you know, it's just stuff we do, you know, uh, ice bath and grass fed beef and just sharing all the behind the scenes of what the true chiropractic lifestyles really about because it's not just to me it's not just getting adjusted it's about what you eat what you yeah think, it's how you the, treat people. The, the three t's traumas toxins and thoughts you know you gotta manage your thoughts you gotta manage toxins and you know manage the traumas and share that you know i got my instagram uh program that I just finished. Uh, we're going to be releasing here soon. It's called The Good IG. It's basically, I tell uh, doctors like, uh, what do people want to see? You know, and I, and I learned a lot of my social media people from a lot of influencers in California. Like uh, one of the big ones was Carter Scherer. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's on a YouTube channel, but He's got he's got a few million people on YouTube and uh, he came in. I'm like, dude, I'm just I'll work on you. You just you just teach me. And he did an episode in the office and it's gotten millions of views already. And these kids are geniuses at at marketing and social media. So they they taught me a lot of stuff. And I'm going to and I share it with chiropractors because like we suck at at entertaining and it's like we just put up a slide and it's fucking stupid. Like don't eat sugar. And these are the reasons why, like, no one cares. People want to be entertained. So I teach people how to, how to, you know, they, we don't want to watch five minutes of you just ranting on something, you know, give it just a short, like, I think of it like if, when someone's taking a shit on the toilet, like you get, and it's muted. You get like a half a second to grab their attention. You got this fast. It, no, no, you don't get it. You got it that fast or, or you can't get it. So, you know, just small bursts and, you know, how to respond to posts, how to post, how to do stories, uh, you know, how to film and how to get the patients to, to get on board. Because really I used my patients to grow my Instagram by, uh, by collaborating on videos with them and then they share it to their 300 people that they know. And that's like passing out my business card to 300 local people. I'm like, dang. And then they just pour in, who's your chiropractor? And then I respond to their responses. And, you know, so there's, there's a, there's a method to my madness and it's, uh, and it's, it's worked out great. And I've already, I've already scheduled, we're not open yet. And I've already scheduled eight new patients for, That's what the, I'm saying. That's for the, when we open and they've already all prepaid to 247 or 297 two, I think 249 is the price I got on the website right now so well it's just really cool to hear that 
uh, you know, this title that we're going to title this one, create the American dream with chiropractic in America. America really, without yeah. the A, just America. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, from a guy that had it all um, and left it in California and yep. the, friends, the family, the things, just the like house, that. the cars, and yep. uh, that you're out here um, doing the upstart method again. Yeah. And it's you're a California guy in Texas. And yeah. you know, you're I try to with, not you're, mention that, but yeah, but you're dealing with the stigma. You're dealing with the yeah. stigma. I think and you're, and, think and, you're, and you're gonna grow it all back up. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I did keep one car. It's my '57 Caddy, so <laughs> I, I couldn't let that one go. <laughs> that well, one got shipped here. I, I'm excited for your program, the Good IG. I'm yes. excited for the Good Life podcast. Yeah, it's really really cool to see that um, you're still learning. You're still integrating, and uh, you're a chiropractor, man. And I appreciate yeah. you being on episode 578, of the Chiro Hustle Podcast. This is uh, yes. take two with you. Yes, um, I know we'll have you on again. But is there for anything sure. that we didn't touch on today that you think would be mm. necessary for our audience? Um, go out and get the Good Roll Pillow. <laughs> you can use the code Cairo Hustle and get 10% <laughs> off. <laughs> It's a great tool we use in the office for posture correction. And I think that's about it so far, man. I'll keep you posted when I when I hit a hundred in a week. Yeah, and man. Then... We'll follow we'll follow the growth and we'll have you back on. Yeah, hundred a week. That's the first goal, then two hundred, then three hundred. And yeah. we'll just just keep it going. Let's, you take, know? Let's, let's take it to the max, man. Yes, sir. Well, thanks for being our guest today. We well, really appreciate for, it. Thanks for having me, my friend. Yeah, you know, I, I rarely swear on my podcast just because oh. my friend's mom watches it. Oh, sorry. You, you can. Okay. But this hat stands for Cairo as fuck. And, okay, good. <laughs> and and I, I think that when people get to know me, they know that that's my ethos. They know that that's my path. And that's they, know funny. That, they know that we hustle for chiropractic. And yeah. It's go, it's, it's go forth and serve, man. Yeah. And that's that's really what indebted me to this profession is because chiropractors really are servants and providers yeah. and misunderstood. And I'm taking yeah. an underdog class of people, doctors, yep. and making them relevant. So yes. thanks 100%. for being relevant with your story. Thanks for being a part of our ecosystem. It. And yeah, if buddy. you guys got to this point in this interview, share this. Um, yes. That's the that's the feed of the show until I start the Patreon. Yeah. Where... That's the fee. <laughs> Share the show. Don't be a hoe. <laughs> you listen to Andy too, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, love I love it. I love it. Um, let's Ameri let's let's make America great again with chiropractic. Um, yes, the, sir. The dream of chiropractic in America, America without the A. America. Uh, for te <laughs> TexasPainkiller.com. Check him out. Yes, Dr. sir. Dr. Kenji Ehrlich. Um, thanks for being on with us today. I appreciate you. Thanks, man. All right, man. Until next time. You guys just went right. story away. Keep hustling. See you guys on Peace the next out. episode. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.